In this video, I'm going to be forging a pretty simple pair of dividers that was commonly found in shop classes years ago. Hi, I'm Dennis Frechette, and welcome back. Today, I'm working on a project that was actually inspired by a video that I saw recently. The channel is called Can the Sheet Metal Dude, and his videos usually have Sheet Metal is Fun in the title. Uh, this video, he was making a transition from a square uh, ductwork to a round ductwork, but he was using a pair of dividers that I had totally forgotten about. And we had them in our high school, and I always thought they were kind of neat looking and, you know, very simple design and very elegant and, you know, kind of thing I never would have thought of in a million years. But anyway, he was using one of these in his videos, and I thought, well, you know, what a flashback. So I watched, you know, oh, I was watching the video anyway, but I, you know, I continued to watch. And around the 30 minute mark, he finally put these things down long enough so that I could have a really good look at them. So uh, I have the link for that video in the description so you can check it out. Uh, but, you know, that's what I have for you today. It's a prototype. I'm just playing around with the idea. Um, and I'll uh, probably uh, tweak it a bit and uh, do another version later on. But this is the uh, start of the thought process. So hope you enjoy it. So what you're looking at here is a screenshot from the Sheet Metal is Fun video. And this is at the 3131 mark. So like I say, he was you know, kind enough to put these down long enough so I could look at them and study them. And the, the one thing that I really like about this design, I mean, as you can tell, there's nothing special about it. These are just stamped out by the millions. But the locking mechanism is really ingenious. Having the legs cross over like that and then just a simple collar that rides up and down, you know, depending on how the legs are positioned and just locks it in place wherever they happen to be. That is a really usable idea. And I think it has a lot of potential, you know, in a forged piece. So uh, today I'm going to uh, work with this uh, idea and uh, see what I come up with. To make these dividers, I'm going to be using a couple of pieces of 3 16 by 3 quarter inch uh, flat bar, and they're roughly 16 inches long. I think the cross section is pretty close to what you know he has in his video, and the length is just arbitrary. It's what I had around. I'm going to be starting at the top of each arm and working my way down. So this is the short little loop right at the top of the dividers where the pivot pin goes. I'm going to be making the curved part of these dividers a lot larger than the originals. The curved section is probably going to be at least half the overall length of the dividers. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want there to be an opening at the very top of the dividers, regardless of where the legs are set to. So even if the dividers are maxed out, I want there to be an opening right at the pivot point area at the top of the dividers that I can use to hang these things up. I noticed in the original that this space was rather small to begin with and it disappeared entirely long before you maxed out the dividers. So that for me is a problem for the way that I work. So I'm going to be changing the shape of the dividers quite a bit even though I'm staying with the overall concept. Here I'm starting to shape the points on the dividers and when you're hammering thin uh, flat bar like this you always close off the end of the shape right away. By creating a point here you're establishing a pretty strong cross section and that prevents the bar from buckling. So once you have that established you can pretty much forge the bar the way you would anything else.
Here I'm starting to forge the second half of the pair of dividers. So from here on in, you're going to see me doing a lot of measuring and comparing with the uh, first half that I made, which is now my pattern piece. The divider points on the original were shaped by creating a pretty sharp bend in the bar. Uh, here I'm creating an offset which is going to give a little bit more shape to that area and create a nicer transition. That's the nice thing about forging. These kind of details are so easily done and they really make a big difference to the final look of the piece. Here I'm starting to work on the collar that's going to be locking the two legs together and this is pure guesswork on my part. I took a divider setting that was oversized for the collar and I'm going to be working to those measurements. Once the collar is done and it's on the dividers, I'll be able to better use the actual collar to estimate what the size should be. But for now, I'm just looking for something that I can work with.
Here you can see I'm a little bit further along. I've spent a little bit of time cleaning up the legs. I have the holes drilled for the pivot pin and the collar is complete with the set screw. So just basic drilling and tapping. I'm going to start by sliding on the collar because I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to put the collar on after the legs are pinned together. Uh, I'm guessing with this design, if it's done right, uh, the, the shape of the legs is going to prevent you from sliding that collar off, but uh, we'll find out in a minute. Here I'm locking the set screw so I can use it as an extra pair of hands to keep everything lined up while I'm doing the riveting. And as always, I'm using a light hammer to start the rivet and to see how everything is going, and then I'll move to a heavier hammer to finish it up. So here's the finished piece. Overall I'm very happy with it. It's a good start. The top half of the dividers turned out looking a lot larger than I had expected, but that's easily fixed. And I can get the collar off of these pair of dividers, but I think that's just because the collar right now is so oversized. Once I get that dialed in, I think that will no longer be the case.